Hey what's up guys, in today's video you're gonna find out all you need to know about the secondary air system on this Mercedes with a V6 engine. So we're gonna see the components of the system, how they work, how to test them up and how to remove them of course. Let's begin by removing the air filter housing. Alright, so now all the components are situated on front of the engine. We've got here the switchover valve or the solenoid which will basically turn on and off these two valves or two actuators. You've got one for each bank. They are interconnected with a vacuum line. Then you've got the big air pump in front here. And then attached to the pump you've got the air hose which delivers the air to the both actuators. Now if you have a closer look here you can see the valve is connected to the engine head through this metal tube. And through that tube the air is delivered once the valve is open by this solenoid. So let's see a little quick how the system works and why you have this system on an engine. Well this system is not necessary to run the engine but it's for the emissions. So when you start first time the car is not running on closed loop which means that it's not using the oxygen sensors as a feedback to regulate the fuel delivery. Therefore the car tends to pollute more in that period. So what this air injection does, it will warm up the catalytic converter and the oxygen sensors a lot faster. So in that way the computer can use the feedback from the oxygen sensors to regulate the fuel trims. And therefore the car can pollute less because it takes less time to warm up. Usually you've got this system on Euro 3 emission standard cars. So as I said this is not necessary for the engine to run but if you want to pass the technical inspection then you need to have this system working properly. Okay so now let's start by testing up the components and let's start with the solenoid. And the solenoid has four things. This is the evacuation port, you've got the connector, you've got this vacuum line which takes vacuum from the intake manifold and then you've got the delivery line which delivers vacuum to these two actuators to be opened and let the air from the pump to travel inside the exhaust manifold. Now if I want to do a complete test on this solenoid I have to get access to this vacuum line and disconnect it from there and to do that we have to remove the pump first. To do that it's very simple you're gonna need the E10 and open this bolt. You've got this ground wire, this bracket which you need to pry it out because it connects under there like that. Unplug the connector and the air pump should be out. Disconnected from the air hose here. Here is the point through which the pump is sucking the air. And this is the point through which it delivers the air. Now let's unplug the vacuum hose from the intake manifold. Now of course I could unplug it from here and apply the vacuum through this point. But I want to test the hose as well. And we know with almost certainty that the intake manifold has vacuum when the engine is running. So... We're gonna apply the vacuum through this point. And now the solenoid should hold the vacuum. This is at zero. And let's see. You can see it does hold the vacuum. That's a good sign. You need to inspect as well the hose which shouldn't collapse under the vacuum. So I'm gonna keep it like that. We can have a look on that. And let's remove the solenoid from here. I'm gonna take out this evacuation port because it's in my way. This might look like a not important part, however, this is the filter which will allow the air to go in when the vacuum is released from the actuators. So the air will enter through the system and this is a small filter here, which is kind of important to not clog up all the lines. Now to test the solenoid, I've got here a connector from the coolant temperature sensor, which actually fits here as well. And I've got a 12 volt battery. I will apply again the vacuum. Now let's apply 12 volt to the solenoid and we should see an immediate release of that vacuum. And we do. Let's reconnect this line here. And now when I apply the vacuum, it should activate both actuators. Okay, well it holds vacuum which is a good sign. Obviously you're gonna need a lot more vacuum because it's a lot more volume. Okay, I've got the solenoid activated by the way. 
Now you want to inspect the hoses, they shouldn't be collapsed. Everything looks okay. Now theoretically if I blow here, the air should travel all the way to the exhaust pipe on the back of the car. And what I'm gonna actually do, I will disconnect the hose on one of these actuators. Now this hose is connected to only one actuator. I'm going to plug this hole. Now if I blow air through this port, when the vacuum is not activating the actuator, we should not be able to deliver the air into the exhaust manifold. So I'm going to blow through this point and to do that I'm going to clean it with alcohol a little bit inside and let's see. Oh yes, that thing is blocked, which is good. Now let's apply the vacuum and we should be able to blow the air now. All right, the vacuum is there. And yes, I can blow, but very little bit, not that much. Yeah, this car needs new actuators. Now I will try to apply the vacuum directly. And by the way, we know that the solenoid works. We test it up, it delivers vacuum, it opens and closes. So our next suspect are these valves. So I'm going to apply the vacuum directly and see what will happen. I can blow, but very hard and it's supposed to go a lot more air as you can see this hose allows a lot more volume of air to pass in we've got a confirmed problem this actuator needs replacement and i suspect that this one is bad as well so i'm not even gonna test it everything looks good the lines are okay maybe this will explain as well why the car was smelling when you started for first time it does smell kind of a lot and this might be the reason. This valve actually has two screws and that's how you can replace it. Oh wow, that's stuck in there, man. Oh, that's stuck in there, man. Amazing, amazing. Nobody opened this for a long time. So we've got the unpredicted stuck bolt situation here. I'm going to make a cut right in the middle of the bolt and hopefully I can put a flathead screwdriver in there. Uh, it looks like I've got a lot more grip in there. I actually twisted the bit. Oh, that's crazy. Uh, that bolt will not come out from there. All right, so I've got a problem. The only solution is to cut it off from here. I can cut it on this level like that because down here is just a hole. But the problem is I don't have the new one to put it back. So I will have to leave them like this for the moment. So it's actually a simple job, but I don't have the part right now. So I cannot do it right now. And by the way, guys, this is a very good example on why it's important to inspect the components on your engine, even though there are no trouble codes on the engine. For example, in this situation for the computer, it's impossible to know that these valves are broken. If this solenoid does the job, the computer assumes that these valves are working. Now I've got here a bigger 12 volt battery and I've got here the pump. Let's actually put it back in position here. Let's apply 12 volts to it, okay. So the air pump works. And for example, if it makes a lot of winding noise, it's most likely also that it's not delivering the air pressure here. But on this one was a lot of pressure and the sound was okay, was normal. So everything looks good here. One more thing to check is, for example, when you start the car first time, is to check if you've got 12 volts, send it from the computer here. All right, so that was pretty much it about this system on this car. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you have questions, let me know and I will see you in the next video.